We have had a great roll-up of guests so far for the KTM Summer Grill here at speedcafe.com. Delighted to be joined for this edition by Roland Dane. In years gone by, when you would have dropped by, I would have talked Team Boss, Red Bull, Ampole Racing. We would have rolled out your, your title. Mm. How are you enjoying retirement? Oh, uh, I've, sometimes I feel retired some days when I can go fishing and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy the bay and, and everything on my boat. But there are other days when I feel, Jesus, I still, still feel like I'm going to work. And what's this all about? So being a varied year. It means that you, you can look at things does it with a, with a different set of eyes because you you know you're still very passionately connected to it we see you at gt events and so yeah i mean i can look at triple eight and the sport as a whole mm-hmm. uh differently got more time to to think about it as it were and to uh to reflect um but i also really enjoy my involvement as a board member of pwr as well mm-hmm. and um so I've got enough to keep me occupied between that and the and the Triple Eight involvement, even if it's uh, much smaller and mm. very much in the background. Uh, so it's not as though I've, I'm completely idle, no. but I am. Tr- yeah, I do use the time to try and try and think more about what's going on. That's people's, I, I think, observations because they, you know, they might see you pop up at a, you know, at a speed series broadcast at, yep. the, at the track and so on. So you know, you you're clearly still around it. One of the other additions. In a, in a good way, if we can talk about that with the natural connection, is doing some stuff at speedcafe.com. How are you enjoying that? What prompted that? And, and are you enjoying the kind of freedom of sharing your thoughts? Well, I've, I've talked with Crusher about it for ages, and it was never appropriate in my mind uh, to do it. In the previous scenario. You yeah, can, yeah, yeah, and it was never appropriate, really. And, and now uh, now it's easier to, to do because there's no point in doing something like that unless you're actually going to to say what you what you think uh the great thing is that yeah even though we've only been doing it a couple of months the number of people uh even in adelaide who came to me and said well you're saying what we'd like to say but we don't feel we're able to Mm -hmm. um (laughs) on a few topics which is good um but i i I enjoy it i you know uh i don't want to um i don't want to be shy about it Mm -hmm. that uh, some things need to be said and um and hopefully, overall, in a constructive, in a constructive way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I, I I enjoy writing. You know, I write it myself. It's not written by somebody else. Okay. So, um, and uh, and I enjoy doing it. Are the topics, the threads that you might go with, born out of, you know, conversation with constituents? Maybe maybe it's fans or reaction to something. What more? But that actually prompts you to, to launch into a particular thing. Yeah, different things. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I, I wrote something recently about and giving uh, supercars a serve about uh, not having their calendar out in a timely fashion because it affects so much downstream of them. Um, so there's a responsibility if you're the senior category uh, in the uh, in the country and. The final, you know, although I've been thinking about it, the final straw was really a um, a, a marshal who came up to me um, very politely and just down the road from where I live, shopping place, and said, you don't know who I am, Roland, but can I just say that I'm a corner worker at QR uh-huh. and uh, I go to Darwin and Townsville as well, and I have uh, can't book my time off work, I can't book my flights, and et cetera. And they're volunteers who are paying their way. So that was the sort of straw that broke the camel's back. And I said, well, I've got to say something about this because honestly, it's um, <clears throat> it's something which I know a lot of other people are thinking, but they haven't said anything. Okay. Well, we'll move to civic cars in a moment and, and the broader state of, of play. Can I touch on the the article, for example, about Peter Addison that you wrote? Firstly, you take a tone that is, is um, you talking like this now i would imagine it would have been the kind of thing you would have and probably did say to him face to face either by phone or, or or you know what have you what was the reaction to to that piece um you know given that you explained to him what you thought clearly needed to happen for him to be in the paddock as a team owner in 23 well i mean clearly clearly half the, the team owners in the pit lane text me within five minutes and said oh thanks for saying that up mm. um uh, look, Peter, I've known Peter a long, long time, 25 years or something, and uh, he is a great marketeer. Um, he's a great publicist and everything. 
and uh, and really, you know, he's he's creating a lot of publicity by making a lot of noise and everything around his brand, which is which is good. Uh, but at the end of the day, there is a, a structure in place to to help and to um, to reward and underpin the people who put money into the sport for years and years and years. And so it's just a question of showing them a bit of respect, I suppose, uh, uh, in terms of this discussion about whether there should or shouldn't be um, a 26th uh, TRC um, on the track and and whether he should have it or not. But this, the, he, nobody has a right to it. So he, um, it was uh, said in the article, it was nothing I hadn't said to him at Bathurst, you know, when we shared a garage uh, with the wild cards. So it wasn't a... Um, it, it, it wasn't a difficult conversation at Bathurst. It was, you know, mate, this is how it is. Go and, if you want a, a team, go and buy one. Or we'll, we'll persuade somebody to sell their TLCs individually from their from their team if you don't want their team. But everything's for sale at a price, in my experience. Yeah, yeah. It's called Roland's View. If you haven't already done so, you can go and search for some of the prior articles and keep an eye out for, for future ones as well. Let's move to your thoughts on, on Triple Eight and um, season 2022. And I ask that kind of holistically, Roland, because, you know, I saw you at GT events. The Princes were were there racing. Um, Super 2, Declan Fraser's a guest on the Summer Grill this year as well. I mean, he did an amazing job, didn't he? So, yeah. Yeah. Look, it's been an awesome year for Triple Eight. It's been the best ever, really. Um, and the, in, in a, from a supercar's point of view, there, there are four, four main goals you can, you can kick in a Bathurst. Uh, teams championship, drivers championship, and the Super Two title. And although we won them all uh, in in my time, we never won them all in the same year. We've won three, thus a few times, but never four. So uh, that was <clears throat> that was a big uh, a big gold kick uh, for for Jamie and Jessica and the rest of the team. And then the GT element of it, where uh, you know won the teams championship in Asia, won the pro am. Uh, championship up there with Prince Jeffrey, um, and and came third in the in the championship down here in Australia. So uh, there was a lot going on, and I helped a little bit where I could. And of course, highlight uh, for me was uh, running the uh, the car at the uh, the twelve hour for Kenny Habul um, with Triple Eight that was uh, that won that race as well. Mm. Um, in doing a little bit of research for for this, I had a fun conversation with with Tony Quinn around you, you know your involvement in GT now and you know what would it have been like back in the day when he was running it and, and so on he's uh he's, he's got some quite funny takes on that and now of course he's part of the the Triple Eight organization isn't he so yeah yeah, yeah. It, um look Tony and I are very similar in uh, in a lot of ways to be honest and uh but you probably didn't need us in the same room trying to do the same thing at the same time um but uh but it, and he uh, yeah, he gets a kick out of his involvement in in Triple Eight, that's yeah. for sure. You mentioned Jamie and Jessica before. Your your daughter Jessica Dane, Jamie Winkup, naturally. Um, do they come to you for advice? And and um, you know, I mean, she, she's been off doing some great study in the in the legal sphere, which I think will help with the business and corporately, so to speak. How, how have they gone, and have they sought some guidance? Yeah, I mean, they do. Uh, um, yeah, Jamie will call me. Uh, I don't know once a week about a particular thing or something, just for some inputs. Uh, he, yeah, he's still finding his finding his way, finding his feet as a uh, team principal and managing director of a what's a you know the biggest race team in Australia, uh, probably by some margin, and uh, he's finding his way still. So I'm happy to to offer it, but I don't I, I don't give it unless I'm asked. Okay, and uh, and I'm sure. There'll be times when he, you know, when he looks back and says, "Oh, I wish I'd asked about that." But he's got to find his own way. Mm. You know, that's we've all made the mistake. Only the liars haven't made mistakes in in developing in in that sort of position, especially. So there'll be some pitfalls along the way, but uh, they do ask for for advice here. Yeah. He did a little bit of racing uh, along the way this year, and I could see how enthused he was mm. by that. In in kind of the whole weaning off process, how mm. how important. Has that been? And what is his management style like? And and how does that fit with the next chapter for the Triple Eight? Yeah, I mean, Jamie's still, yeah, he's still coming to terms. I think with as well an element of it of not being a full time driver. Um, he's enjoyed driving GT car uh, uh, just to keep his hand in 
um, et cetera, and, and of course being uh, Brock's co-driver at Bathurst. So he still enjoys driving cars. There's absolutely no question that he, that he likes that. But the, uh, the biggest thing in motor racing is running people. Mm. And, uh, and he's still learning to run people and to, to get the best out of the people to, uh, <laughs> to work long-term with them. And that's a learning process that uh, doesn't happen instantly. Uh, but he's, he's gone from, you know, running a couple of very successful car washes uh, to having these people employed by him, which uh, earn quite a lot of money in engineering and lead mechanics and this sort of thing, who, who need probably nurturing in a very different way. So he's, he's learning all that, but he's, and he's learning it fast. Uh, that's the biggest challenge in this business. Where in, um, in your mind is the, the five or 10 year plan looking back at, at that business and where it's, where it's headed and, and the changes that we're now moving into as far as things like supercars are concerned. You, you mean from the business point yeah, of view? Yeah. Look, he, um, I reckon only the liars know where the world's going to be in five years and 10 years and. Um, you can try and make judgments and you can plan based around what you've got mm -hmm. today. Um, PWR, we've got a great strategic plan, but of course there are elements coming along all the way through that timeline mm -hmm. that could totally be beyond our control that could change things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whether it's wars or, <laughs> um, yeah, whether it's currency changes or whatever, there's all so many elements as far as supercars goes, um, yeah, I think we've got the next five years uh, clear with the Gen 3 cars mm -hmm. um, and, and Triple Eight can structure itself around that, um, around the GT program from a business point of view. Uh, the big question is what comes after that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is something that is, in my mind, up in the air and needs to be the minute the cars hit the track at Newcastle, next year that then needs to become somebody's focus it's not my focus but the the next generation that's got to be their focus both from their individual race team point of view right. and also the wider industry in this country so that naturally leads us to state of the sport state of the nation with that ability to kind of sit back a little more now and and yeah. take the blinkers off what are your observations what do you think look um it's difficult to say that uh anything other than I'm, I'm disappointed with the new ownership at supercars mm -hmm. in terms of not, not, not really making the most of the, of the asset uh, this year. The second half of the year, there have been some cracker events. Don't get me wrong. I and mean, Pukekohe was fantastic. Yeah. Bathurst, back to its proper days and everything. Okay, weather affected, but basically there again. Adelaide of um, Arts. And yeah, mm -hmm. Gold Coast and then Adelaide was just a superb. Mm -hmm. And in a, in my mind, it's better to have Adelaide at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We're away from the Adelaide Festival, so that all works. Um, but I don't see a lot of the other stuff that were promised when, you know, to be honest, I did the deal on behalf of the teams over a year ago with these people. And I don't see a lot of the stuff that was talked about then mm -hmm. um, in terms of the the media, peripheral, digital, I don't see that coming to life. Now, I give them the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. uh, in that, um, okay, this year is this year and uh, Gen 3 is be, uh, behind the scenes, been a major preoccupation bringing that to life. I hope that they, <laughs> on the back of Gen 3, they really ramp up the profile mm -hmm. of the sport mm -hmm. Uh, next year and the unfortunately the calendar um, scenario hasn't sent the right message so far let's park that and hope that in next year they do a do a better job um, and they're not the only ones you know that ARG need to do the same they need to step up as well um, in my mind do a better job uh, and uh, in order to provide the platforms that very much competitor led mm. rather than the supercars top end, uh, which is a different scenario. When you've got competitor led motorsport, you've got to remember who your customer is. Fundamental. Remember who your customer is. 
and there needs to be a bit more focus on their customer, be it the competitor, the fan, or whatever. They've got to. This platform here is to enable you to to have your say naturally. They're not here to to defend themselves. Can can I throw something at you in, in that might offer a little bit of um, alternate take or, or, or balance in this, right? Uh, there are constituents in the pit lane who might say, well, race have spent time um, gathering information, quietly getting to know the business, et cetera, before they start to announce grand plans. Do you, do you see that? And certainly from an ARG standpoint, you know, we had Marcello Lotti at Bathurst announcing some things. There are some, you know, there's some yeah. right there for those guys. So that, that might be it. Um, yeah, it. Absolutely right. And the the that's why I say it from the race point of view, mm -hmm. give them the benefit of the doubt. As, but now it's some step up next year mm. with Gen 3 right. and put the um, put all the, the plans into action that they talked of 18 months ago around that as we come on track with what I think is the best looking cars mm. we've ever seen mm. in the category. So, and hopefully they race well. Um, and with, the, look, with, with um, uh, ARG, there was all the confusion over what, you know, were supercars going to buy ARG or not or whatever. So that, that somewhere hasn't helped the situation in the industry. Now that's clear that it's not happening and everything. ARG need to um, make their own path, as a, which it should be, a, as a separate category um, and serving a, a very, very important role uh, as, as the second level and filling weekends where supercars are not playing. And, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully next year, they uh, they they step up with uh, in terms of the um, Bathurst International Bathurst International growing that mm -hmm. um, into an event in particular that one. In, um, but they've also got to to their credit they've got uh, one of the best competitor led events in the country, which is the Bathurst Six Hour. Yeah, and and that's a ripper event. Uh, and they they're now going to push GT Four, which is something that I've been pushing behind the scenes as well. Uh, and uh, and so there should be some good news next year. I just hope after this sort of, this turns out to be a transitional year for both organizations and next year, they really uh, show what they're made of. Shift the gear and, and yeah, away we go. Absolutely. A couple to finish on, on be, be um, remiss of us to, to get you in here and not get an observation on both Shane Van Gisbergen and Brock Feeney. Uh, I mean, l let's start with, with SVG. Um, an unbelievable year for him, uh, whether it be, you know, a top 10 finish in a World Rally Championship event on debut to winning Bathurst and, and a title again. I mean, it just, uh, in, and the, the, the results achieved, the race results over the season, I mean, just remarkable for him, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, look, the guy, when he's in the zone and he able to, concentrate on what he's doing uh without distractions um in our world he's unbeatable really uh he's um running at an exceptionally high level now uh yeah i've watched him ever since basically he went to techno in 2013 been able to keep an eye on him and and don't forget yeah we signed him up 18 months before mm -hmm. he actually drove for uh, for Triple Eight, uh, because I recognised there was a talent there that we that we had to to keep hold of. So uh, I'm a I'm a massive fan as well when I see the rallying and everything else that's gone on. So uh, to see him operating at this level is something that every real motorsport fan should look at and and say, uh, "Wow, how good is this?" Yeah, it doesn't happen every day, does it? So. Uh, quite exceptional. As far as um, Brock goes, uh, personally, that's a that's a big thing because yeah, I was the one who pushed him mm -hmm. uh, internally. Um, I went to Red Bull a couple of years ago and said, um, "I want you to back me on this," which is why they helped in Super Two, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and they said that you know from Austria through to Australia here. He said, uh, Roland, if you think that's the way to go, we'll back you. And so um, I couldn't have been happier than when I saw him win the final race of the year at, at Adelaide uh, and, uh, and really vindicate the decision. Um, when only a couple of weeks before, somebody said to me, 
who in the industry, oh, do you think Brock will keep his drive next year? And he was already sixth in the championship, hadn't been done since 97 with Murphy. Um, and and they're saying, well, should he keep his drive? Of course he should keep his drive. Um, and then he silenced any critics that there were mm. at, at, at Adelaide. So I couldn't have been happier to see him do that. The guy's a star. He's a, um, and he'll only get bigger and bigger, in my opinion. Um, he's incredibly focused uh, on on what he does. Awesome. Mm. Let's let's finish with you, if we can. Um, we talked about uh, broader business and five and ten year plans and things mm. like that before. We've seen you at at uh, you know Bathurst Wildcard and at GT mm. events, as we've detailed in this conversation. Yeah. Are you doing more than you perhaps thought you might be doing? And what is your own personal five year thing, Roland? Look. Uh, I'm not sure, really. I'm still trying to find the level mm -hmm. that I'm comfortable with. Uh, I love the 12-hour, the Bathurst 12-hour. I love that event mm. and uh, was instrumental, rightly or wrongly, in supercars buying it, you know, seven years ago or something. So I love the event uh, to to run Kenny a Bull um, and co in, in, uh, in May at, um, at the event was... Uh, was great, mm -hmm. um, and then even better to win it. Yep. Uh, so Triple Eight have asked me to think about running in February again. I think they're just uh, trying to get all the ducks in a row at the moment. Uh, so I'll probably get sucked into doing that. <laughs> um, but I'm uh, and I'll go to GT events for the most part because uh, I really enjoy the interaction with the the two princes. And Prince Jeffrey and Prince Abu Bakr, I enjoy that. But more than that, I also feel a, a sense of responsibility for tri to Triple Eight and to them and their and their family uh, about their involvement. And uh, it's a uh, it's something that I've known the family a long time, and I j I want to see them succeed. And they're getting better and better at what they do. Mm. And so, to be honest, going and watching them race, um, I get a kick out of seeing them do well. So I'm very happy to, to still have at least an involvement in that. Very pleased you are too. Thanks for stopping by. Awesome, uh, awesome chat. I think on your social media recently, you were out on the boat and you said something about using your carbon credits for the electric car, et cetera, et cetera. We hope you, uh, you get to do a bit more boating and fishing, whatever it might be, um, over the summer break and, and enjoy 2023. Thanks, Rossi. There he is, Roland Dane. We hope he has a great festive season. That is another edition of the KTM Summer Grill Run and Done. Make sure you tune back in tomorrow to speedcafe.com to see who our next guest is. As a part of this year's Summer Grill, our great partner in KTM each week has a special prize pack to give away, which includes a stool, a stubby holder, and a KTM hat. Very cool additions for your man cave, your garage, or just for around the barbecue. To enter, all you've got to do is head to speedcafe.com or click on the link description below and you could be in the running. And check out, of course, tomorrow's next edition of the KTM Summer Grill right here at speedcafe.com.